Jay here from Stratford Paddock, and this is the Derby County preview. We've actually preview. got a preview because we're back playing football matches at Manchester United again. Joining me is Alex Baggers. Baggers, <sighs> football's here again. Football's Real football. Back. Never mind all that international nonsense, right? Football's coming over. This is that, much more important. This is it, isn't it? United Forget versus Derby, mate. England versus Italy yeah. in the biggest thing that England have ever done mm. since 1966. <laughs> Manchester United playing Derby County when everyone's on holiday is going to be a great where, game. This is the real quiz. <laughs> this is quiz. important. This is where it's happening. Um, there is a connection here, obviously, with Derby, with a certain Mr. Wayne Rooney. He is. He's the manager now. Yeah, he's, he's managing himself. now, looking well as well. Um, <laughs> well, he is. I don't know why all these memes going around, looking at Wayne Rooney at 35, whatever it was, and everyone else. Yeah, I think he looks Joe good. Ronaldo is. Yeah. Steve, you know I mean? why are you bringing Gerard into this? What, what the rest of the North Exactly. Point, Bore off. Yes. Um, just about survived, didn't he? Yeah. By the skin of his teeth last season. Um, he's taken, well, not taken, he's got Ravel Morris in there training as well. I don't know if he's going to be become a Derby County player. Obviously, someone that's been on the channel, a friend of the yeah. show. Um, what do you make of this sort of as a, a pre-season friendly? Because obviously, it's against a team that just about survived in the Championship. We know a lot of players are going to be missing. Do you think this is a sort of a good way to, to start pre-season against a team like Derby? Yeah, it's a little I mean, it's a little bit different in it because usually when we do the pre-season, you end up doing you the four games and it's usually international teams we end up playing. So it's usually AC Milan's youth team and then you play someone else and then you'll end up because you're travelling around the world and you're doing some international cup. Whereas now it's... It looks like we've got... We think we've got Derby, we've got Preston, I think we're playing as well. It's a lot more... English-based teams, it's more probably a bit more physical. They're not going to maybe take it as easy as those teams are, where they're going to you know, be protecting players. These players are probably going to be up for it, fighting for, for places in, in the championship and stuff. So, it, it, of course, I think it could be a good thing to, to do that. But at the same time, the first one, especially in all pre the first pre-season is never good because, like I said, mo a load of people are away for both sides. So you're not yeah. really going to get a reflection of who's going to be starting next season. It's kind of just who's there. It's almost a training session. It's just who have we got? Um, yeah. Anyone up for it? Anyone, Anyone up fancy for it? this? Yeah. What sound can you get here? Can you make kickoff? Well, I, mean, I think Lee Grant's got a chance of playing. Really? He must do. He hey, must be up the there. Legend that the is legend. Lee Grant. That, it's one of them. It's just whoever can, can can play. It's an external training session essentially isn't yeah. it, that we're doing at the weekend. So it's got to take it seriously. Obviously, it's going to be good to see United new kit, all that kind of stuff. But at the same time. It doesn't matter if we win or lose, does it? It doesn't, does nice it? Nice to see the kit. Nice to see the kit. Um, but we suffered, didn't we, last season? Because we didn't have a pre-season. We had that one game against Aston Villa. Yeah. We had a pretty, especially at home, a poor start to the season, mm -hmm. which ended up all the costing us a little yeah. bit because we couldn't really sort of get over yeah. in terms of a title challenge. Um, so it is important, isn't it, to get yeah. these games in early. And like you say, we've got some sort of tough games as well, and some yeah. games against decent opposition. Yeah. So you need that, don't you? Because last season, it was almost like, one game and then you're into the Premier League. And, uh, and it last nice. season, just it was just a continuation of the season before, wasn't it? Yeah. That's all it was. And I think that the ones that did well, I mean, City obviously were the, the big winners of it all, had the biggest squad to rotate it. Also, they played similar to how they played the year before. United didn't really change much that they did. The same kind of team week in, week out. Chelsea had that slow start, but then grew into it. And maybe that was a bit of... A lot of new players. You've not got a preseason to to make that let them adapt. So this would be maybe this is a little bit of a shift. You might see tomorrow. Maybe Ollie tries something different. There's been a couple of reports come out today that Ollie wants to change his formation for next season, depending on who he gets in at centre half. And if he gets even if he doesn't get a midfielder in, he wants to play a more attacking four three three. So maybe Ooh. this is the first game of it. Even look, we're going to play some of the, the youth players play James Garner and see how it goes like that. Or maybe he goes back to 4 2 three, one. Who knows? But maybe this is going to be, let's see him try a few different formations and try something different in this preseason. With all that in mind, do you want to give us your predicted 11? So here is my 11. Uh, it, this isn't entirely just looking through training photos and seeing who's available and going, he'll play. But this is what's happened. So I've gone for in goal. I've got Tom Heaton <laughs> in goal. I'm to see that, by the way. That we've is got the smallest tiny, screen of all screen time, by the way. But this is at. what we've gone for. I've got uh, Tom Heaton in goal making his return. Ooh. Can't say debut, can we? Because it's oh. not. It's a return. Return of the Heaton. Return of the Heaton. I've then gone Brandon Williams because I forgot Aaron Vasaka was fit. But Brandon Williams in there. So yeah. I think he's start. 
Back to we've got Twanzebi and uh, Mengi. Twanzebi looks to be going out on loan, so this might be the last game we see of him before he actually moves out on loan. Alex Tellez is featured. I'd expect Tellez or Williams will be one of those to start. If Williams, if Tellez doesn't play, Williams on the left with Wambasaka, but I'd expect those two. I've gone with Nemanja Matic because I think that even though it's pre-season, you want a little bit of experience in there. You want someone that, that's that's been there, done it. And I think Nemanja Matic is one of those to do it. Uh, James Garner, as I mentioned, what a see him play. He had a good loan spell last year. He played at Watford and he played at uh, Nottingham Forest and was, was brilliant at Nottingham Forest. Forest fans were raving how good he was for them. Uh, then a front, we've got a three of Shaw Atire, Juan Mata and Anthony Ilanga. Yes, like it. Mix of experience of Juan Mata, who's got his new contract, and the young lads. And then Mason of Greenwood, who obviously didn't go to the Euros. Yeah. But look, he's the only striker I could see that's going to start. I don't think it'd be Joe Hugill. I think it's going to be Mason Greenwood starting for Manchester United. I mean, a nice little mix there. You've got yeah. the experience. You've got some, you know some internationals, yep. some players that have won quite a lot of trophies, and you've got the youngsters as well. Um, who do you think has got more to prove? The youngsters or the likes of Matters and Matters? I think it's the youngsters. I, th I feel like it's the youngsters because I think that we kind of know what you're going to get out of Matic and Matter for next season. Yeah. I think you know that Matter's going to play 20 games at tops and most of them are going to be off the bench. Yeah. Most of them are going to be in the cup. He may come in now and again if we need something different, but Matt is going to do that. Matic, I think last season kind of showed where he was. Maybe he he's the one that needs a preseason more than anything else. But I think that if the likes of James Garner impress on this, I think that that because we've been linked so heavily to Varane at centre half, we've not been linked to a midfielder yet, a number six, someone that's going to do it. Maybe this is James Garner to go. I'll do it. I'll play that role. Maybe not every week. Maybe not starting, but cup games, things like that. We're going to stick with this 4-3-3 three, three of a single pivot. Obviously not doing that there, but we're going to try and do this throughout the season. And I'm going to state my claim to be that one. I'm going to play behind the likes of Van der Beek, Pogba, Bruno, maybe a one matter in the season. So maybe James Garner the one. And then the young lads going forward, I think, look, Oli's shown that he's going to give them time. He gave them some time towards the end of last season. Forwards is a little bit easier. You can throw in a langer in now and again and it not be the biggest thing in the world. And, and you know, it cannot affect the result because it's not as less a bit of a less pressure that's not if he pe gives this ball away we're going to lose it's more of a going imp impress kind of thing so I think the front front players the likes of Alanga the likes of Shoratire I think that they're just going to try to enjoy themselves and think Ollie's going to try and get them to do that uh, in the pre-season and hopefully a few games next season Good stuff uh, we'll move on to my team which is fraught with problems immediately <laughs> um, because I've just been informed by producer Cam that some of my players are actually at the Olympics the ones that I've chosen but that shouldn't stop them playing for Manchester United. No, they want to make them. it at this club. Yeah, they'll come back from the Olympics, Do both. play against Derby, and then go back to Tokyo. Um, so, yes, there's, there's going to be some errors here and some players that aren't going to play against Derby, but we'll roll with it anyway. <laughs> um, so I've gone, I think I've got, I can't even read that and I can't remember what I said. I think I've got Tom Eaton um, in goal. Have I got, I've got Tellez, uh, Eric Bailly, and Axel Tuanzebe and Brandon Williams. Now, Eric Bailly... Is at the Olympics. Is at the Olympics. The Coast, yeah. So, it's unlikely that he'll play, yeah. should we say. Very um, likely. We'll, we'll put him in the maybe column. <laughs> um, I've gone for a, sort of the back... sort of the, Sorry, the double pivot of James Garner and Nemanja Matic. They're not the Olympics, are they? So they've no, got no, a fighting no, no, chance. They've got I, a chance. I, I agree with what you said about James Garner. Um, yeah. I think I would have thought he would have gone on loan again, but... Maybe pre-season will give him a chance to, to sort of stake a claim. Yeah. Um, I've gone the next sort of the front, the front four. I've gone with um, Ilanga, uh, Donny van der Beek and Diallo. And there's a problem with that already because Diallo is also with, at the Olympics with Eric Bay. So again, maybe you can count him out, but we'll see. Um, and I've gone with Mason Greenwood up front. So if I had to swap it around, I think you make a good point with putting Mengi in instead of uh, Eric Bay. And instead of um, Diallo, I don't know, who is that? Matter. 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 yeah. Matter. Shoretere, I think, yeah. 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 Give uh, Shoretere a run out. Um, and then obviously Mason Greenwood up front, who, who missed out on the, um, the Euros, but it's probably a good thing. Do you think there's a bit of, you're not going to play? Come on, come back. Yeah, I think, I, I think so. I, think the, he might I don't have think had... he'd have made the 23-man squad or the 26-man squad. I think he... I don't know. Seeing how much Saka played, maybe he wouldn't have done. 
I you know, because I think will. Saka maybe was more important than we everyone said at the start of it all. So I think that I agree. Wouldn't have made, and even if he did, you're seeing Cal- I mean, Calvert Lewin didn't come on, did he? So what's the chance? Calvert Lewin didn't even make the squad at times, which is um, madness. So I and just I think, think that, like with Mason Greenwood. I still think that Southgate had a bit of a bee in his bonnet and what went down with him and Foden. Yeah. He seems to treat Greenwood a little bit differently than, than the way he treated Foden. And I think that whilst Mason didn't have a cons- completely consistent season, towards the end of the season, he was the most prolific player in the Premier League, I think. Yes, Six so- goals in his last eight games. So I was, if it wasn't an injury and if it was just a case of you're not going, that would have surprised me a little bit when you consider he can play down the middle, he can play on the left, he can play on the right, and he, you know, he's capable of getting your goal out of nothing. But I'm glad that we're not talking about we could it in an alternative universe, we could be sat here talking about the fact that Jaden Sancho, Marcus Rashford and Mason Greenwood are all getting grief. I'm not saying he would have missed a penalty or whatever, no. but it could have been a, one of those things. It isn't, now we can move forward, focus on Manchester United and he can do what he does best and that's banging in the goals uh, in a red shirt. Uh, looking at Derby County and Manchester United's head-to-head, we've played them obviously quite a lot of times. Used to be in the Premier League, didn't they, yep. Derby? We've also they played them in the FA Cup. Um, if we can get the last sort of five fixtures. I mean, it doesn't tell you a lot because this is a friendly. So it's not like you can say, oh, this is the form. This is what we're going to expect. And we have got a very good record against them. We've won four of the last five, but this is a friendly game in it. I mean... Again, form goes out the window. It's not like a thing. It doesn't really... You don't really know. Depends on who they've got fit. They've probably got a few more players. They'll have probably had less go to... The Euros and Manchester United have done so probably got more round. <laughs> yeah. I'm I think guessing. that's a probably, probably. I think that's a safe bet, bro. A safe bet. Yeah. They've had a few less players go to the Euros, so we're probably going to have. They probably maybe have a stronger to their normal eleven that will play. They've obviously got a likes of. They've said Ravel Morrison on trial. There's no really word whether he can no, play or not. I don't think not, he's but, got a contract with him or anything um, like that. So I he might just train. I don't think it's a trial. I think he's just training. Just training. Yeah. For now, so, so I don't know whether it might be with yeah. a view to. But to, again, it's um, it's one of those. It's pre-season. You mentioned you mentioned Mason there playing through the the middle. Is this him starting to say, right, going to play you through the middle now as a thing now? And hopefully you start this. Well, if Jamie Sancho comes in, then he's not going to play on the right, is he? I wouldn't have thought as well he'd have played on the left because even when Marcus is out having his operation or whatever, for me, Martial probably fits in there because he's still, he might, still at the club. And then you've got an instant Cavani of He Mason might in the play middle. on the right whilst Marcus has his operation. And where Jaden Sancho go? On the left. And no, Andy Marshall. So maybe not. Out. I think that might happen a lot. I think you might see Sancho on the left, Marshall through the middle, and uh, Mason on the right on occasion. I think Cavani will start there. I think it'll be a mix of all. But I think that I'd like to see. I want to see I'd Mason like through to the middle. See, more. That's what I'm saying. I'd like to see him just not be on the right at all, and just him and Cavani all to uh, swap him round because. Yeah, yeah. He is a striker. That's where he, you know, he sort of made his name. He's been f- not sort of forced out there in a way because we haven't got an out and out right winger and he can obviously cut in on his left. But I think if we can try and get Mason Greenwood playing down the middle, and I I still think, I know a lot of people don't, and you obviously don't, but I still think Andy Martial's got a future to yeah, cover. I and I so. think I think he's going to be on the left. Because he, I, I, I just, I think without Marcus as well, this is his opportunity for the next yeah, two yeah. months. I think so, it's yeah. massively his opportunity because, you know, he was obviously our main number nine. Didn't happen for him last season. He had a good first season under Ole. Didn't happen for him last season. You can argue, yeah, okay, maybe it's going to be him and Cavani or yeah. maybe it's going to be him and Mason and Cavani or whatever. But I think Marcus out, he's got to take that chance on the left-hand side and show what he can do. Even perhaps... Paul Pogba has played on there as well, over on the left-hand side. The, I so mean, the big I just th- would rather see Mason stay The thing there is, you get Jaden Sancho in, which we've done, all of a sudden you've got options and we're talking about he can play left centre. He's got, instead of us going, we've got no one there, we've now got, we can play Mason, we've got Jaden Sancho that can play on the right, you've still got Dan James in and around the club. You've got options there now of people that are comfortable there and not fitting roles kind of thing. Do you not feel though, though with, with Mason though, there is an element of him fitting that role rather than him being comfortable there? Because, a little bit. I mean, he went 23 games without a goal, I think it was, last season. He wouldn't have done that if you put him as a nine. No. And that's not what he's about. And I just no, feel I like he's forced to play there or, you know, he's he's playing there because yeah, yeah. we haven't got another option there. I just, I don't know, personally, I, I just feel it's a bit of a waste of his talents there. And I know he's yeah. always going to be able to do your job. You can play Mason Green, but right back in will do your job because he's that skillful and talented. But, I don't know, I'd just rather see him down the middle. But it's a nice issue to have, if you yeah, can even absolutely. call it that. Um, go on to predictions, wrap it up. Go on, what's the score going to be? 4-3 United. Why not? 
<laughs> what are you going for, Jay? I agree. You've got it right. You've nailed it. Four three. Yeah. <laughs> Stick so I'll, go, it. I'll go just to mix it up. I'll go five four. Um, it's going to be go. goal. Hopefully there's goal. I it's one of them. Pre-season, you want to see. Do you care if people make defensive mistakes? No. Let's see loads of goals and Mason shooting from you know 40 what, yards out. Do you know out. we've not included? Is he trained? Is Pereira with the squad? Andreas Pereira is Because he's squad. like the, the pre-season demon, isn't he? Imagine it? if he starts. Well, he, he, that's how he got himself like into the reckoning because he used to have a mint pre-season and then you think like, he's like Jordi Cruyff. You have a mint pre-season, you think he's got it and then... He, he did okay at the beginning of the season and he just tail off. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what, I mean, what happens. I not talked about Phil Jones. He's not been training. He's gone in there. He's just been told, we can't sell you. We're not getting rid of you. We're just going to say you're injured for the rest of time, which is sad, isn't it, oh, a little bit? It is a little bit sad, but, you know, hopefully sooner or later he'll move on and, and have the career that he was... I don't think he'll have the career he was touted as having, just but having he'll have a, a, career, a career, yeah. Playing yeah. some football would yeah. be a, a step up from just not even warming the bench, just warming the training, uh, the treatment yeah. room, whatever he's doing. Anyway, we'll be back for the watch along for this game. When's the watch along kicking off? Sunday, midday. Midday? We'll be hour before kickoff. It's one o'clock kickoff. We'll be here midday, an hour before. Team news, all that kind of stuff. And having a right good chat about football. Right, good chat about football. Baggers, where can people find you? Baggers underscore Alex on everything. On everything. Everything. <laughs> Find me. <laughs> Go and find him <laughs> physically. Go and look for him. He lives in Cheshire. Um, and also, uh, I'll be here with him on Sunday. You know where to find me. Don't forget as well to hit like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell as well on your subscribe button so you get a notification as soon as we go live because we will go live with all the updates surrounding Manchester United. And we'll see you on Sunday. Thanks for watching.